So, we are going to solve this uh, problem. Yeah. So, b b before before we solve this problem, I would like to uh, dissect. I would like to <clears throat> to put the uh, the following into details so that we understand the problem. Now, a problem that is understood you know, is like uh, more than 50% uh, solved, right? So now, um, first, uh, what is this problem all about? It's all about a continuous dryer. So let me underline this. Continuous dryer supplied with air at 21 degrees centigrade dry bulb and 16 degrees wet bulb. Heated. to 75 degrees centigrade. Now, it enters the heating coils at a velocity of 366 meter per minute. And the size of the circular duct is 183 centimeter. Right? So, so let, let, let us uh, <clears throat> interpret that. Let me, let me write here. So... Here are the given. Let me let me use this. So here are the given. So we have a we have a dryer. No. We have a dryer. So the the the, mo the most common uh, way <coughs> of uh, representing uh, this uh, type of problem is uh, by block block diagram. So we have a dryer, and uh, b before you reach the dryer, I mean, as a whole system, there's a component, and it could be represented by another box, and we can call this as heater, right? So heater, heater is um, a, um, a device that uh, has coil, yeah, or heating elements. So normally the coil is made of uh, of wire or uh, tube yeah uh, so that uh, electricity can flow or the steam now if it's a, a tubular or or annular steam can can pass through so that uh, it has steam it has enthalpy and uh, it has uh, flow rate there yeah well uh, what i'm trying to emphasize is that it has a uh, uh, heater part now, the dryer as a whole has a heater part now um before it enters uh, the heater, I mean the the, the air uh, should be available, right? The, the air should be available in that uh, portion. Yeah, so we can call this as uh, uh, point one. Now we can have a mass of air or the mass of dry air um, here. Another air when it's, it goes there. Then here is. MA. So what, what can we say about the dot MA? No, we, we put we, we put like a dot MA just to just to uh, simplify, just to explain that it's uh, more of a rate. No? It is a rate, no? kilogram per hour. That's why M no? dot MA. So it's uh, when you see the dot, no? it has to do with rate, and rate has to do with time element, no? whether hour or, or second. So what is uh, what I'm trying to say in this uh, juncture is this, yeah. So the the available air at the outside is here, not 21 degrees centigrade, and what? Uh, dry bulb, and uh, 16 degrees centigrade wet bulb, right? So at least what is dry bulb, okay? So now, if you are not familiar with this temperature like dry bulb, wet bulb, I think you are kind of lost in this um, in this problem. Now, so you have to understand first what is uh, dry bulb and what is wet bulb. Let me use this uh, blank space here. So dry bulb and it is wet bulb. What, what is this? These are both 
temperature. So you can also write here, right? Temperature, dry bulb, DB. Temperature, wet bulb. So whatever uh, way you write it, as long as you know what you are doing, what you are trying to solve, uh, it, it doesn't really matter as long as you know the variables that you are trying to use. So dry bulb temperature is a temperature that the thermometer measures. No? It's, it's something that we feel. It is, it's, it's the, the temperature that is uh, changing. It's the temperature that, that uh, we are trying to, or that we are measuring in a process. At the same time, same goes with the wet bulb. The only difference is uh, the, the kind of uh, thermometer used. So wet bulb is uh, a thermometer that has a wick, wick, you know, wick like a, I don't know what is this wick. Wick is a material like a, in like a, you have a fiber, uh, like a fiber in the in the plants or something like a fiber in the cloth. Now it's it has a wick. That bulb, that portion that measures the temperature is called the bulb. So at that portion of the wet bulb thermometer, there's a wick. Now so it's a special material that uh, is really intended to, to measure the wet bulb temperature. I think what I would like to share with you is wet bulb, wet bulb temperature is always lesser than, than the dry bulb temperature. So meaning uh, dry bulb temperature is greater than wet bulb temperature. So I think that is my message for this problem. Now, if you were given these two, if you were given these two temperature, you can uh, have other parameters. All right. So I'm trying to draw the so-called psychrometric chart. Psychro Psychrometry chart. So psychrometry is the science that deals with the study of moisture in the atmosphere or moisture in the air. The amount of water vapor in the air, if you are trying to study that and all the related parameters like the temperature and so on, the humidity, uh, what is happening, like the process, the heating, the cooling, and so on, you are studying psychrometry. And there's a tape, a chart called psychrometric chart. And that is the chart where, where you get all these parameters, these thermodynamic parameters that are related to water vapor in the air. Now, so the pressure, the temperature, the, the specific volume, the dew point, yeah? specific humidity or humidity ratio. So now, uh, this chart, this chart, we can label this now for the benefit of others for those who are watching our channel that are not taking uh, mechanical engineering or refrigeration and air conditioning it's for you to to at least uh, relate the in what we are talking about because we have uh, a lot of uh, viewers and uh, watchers or supporters and uh, subscribers that are not uh, engineering not by by uh, profession or by field, so this uh, this uh, this uh, psychrometric uh, chart has parts, right? So if you are going to the right, your process is heating. What kind of heating? Sensible heating, right? Th then if you are going to the left. No, meaning the temperature is uh, reduced or or lessened. You are in the process of oh god sorry cooling. Now, if you are going a bit up, up upward, your process is humidifying 
humidifying, no? Uh, uh, I think the root word is humid, humid. Some, some kind of uh, moisture, yeah? Humid means uh, there's some moisture content. Humidifying is a process that is going upward. And we, when you are going a bit uh, downward, when you change the direction, that's uh, the inverse or the reverse of humidifying that is dehumidifying, right? Now, with this one, two, three, four major um, psychrometric processes, you can have here, you can have it plot plotted here, right? So here, let me use this. Let me use another, another color, yeah, so that it would be more um, visible or articulate. So here, going downward is what? The humidifying. Going upward is what? You. Humidifying. Going to the right is what again? Sensible heating. Going to the left or leftward direction. Is what? Heating, then this is cooling. Meaning the temperature is less, no? What kind of cooling? Sensible cooling. So, uh, there are three, four major uh, processes involved here. And uh, actually, there are seven, but the other three is just um, a derived. Yeah? It, it's a derived uh, process. It's a variant of the combination of the major process. So, uh, like uh, this one. What can you say about the process in between humidifying and uh, what is this? Heating, yeah? Sensible heating and humidifying. Meaning, humidifying means the, the moisture content is increasing, yeah? So the moisture of uh, content is increasing, uh, it's, it's coming. Uh, towards that the line of uh, saturation, which is 100% relative humidity. You see this line? Uh, this is a saturation line. Now, let me put that somewhere. Saturation line. From the word saturated. Uh, saturated, meaning it can no longer hold. No? It reached its limit. That's why it can no longer hold something. And uh, there's a phenomenon like happening there, you know, uh, in this case, it can no longer hold the moisture. So it will become a dew or yung hamog, or halumigmig, you know, or mist. It will have a dew point, you know? And that is happening at this uh, line, with the saturation line, wherein the, the relative humidity is already 100%, no? Know, relative humidity. So uh, relative humidity means uh, the, the, that amount of uh, moisture or water uh, with the amount or uh, specific amount of uh, supposed to be the water vapor in the air. No? So at that uh, pressure. No? So what is the actual uh, amount of water vapor in that air when it's, it, it corresponds to that uh, amount of water of vapor in uh, in the in that uh, specific uh, pressure right uh, of course uh, this is uh, based on uh, atmospheric or only one atmosphere right? one atmosphere condition yeah? so here uh, if I really made myself clear the, the process are, are this no? so when it is between uh, humidifying and sensible heating. So the process, yeah, going 
sloping positive to the right. So this is the combination of humidifying and sensible heating, right? So when you go uh, here downward, it involves this, yeah, the combination of sensible cooling and dehumidifying. What if our process now uh, is uh, going leftward, now uh, going upward to the left? How do we describe this in a, in a bearing or in geodetic terms? It is uh, north, north, yeah, north of what? This is east. This is west. Yeah. So this is going to the north. Going to the north of west. Yeah. So above above the west. I mean northward of west. But uh, to simplify, it is just between sensible cooling and humidifying. So this uh, line is sensible cooling and uh, humidifying. Okay. So, how many uh, process are there now? Uh, 3 plus 3, 6. So I, I mentioned earlier that it should supposed to be 7. So, there is one. Uh, there's one here. Yeah. So, one here. This is um, adiabatic saturation. Now, we're in wet bulb is constant. Yeah? So, that is the review of the cyclonic Chart. Yeah, so cyclonic chart. So let me have this. Uh, what would be the uh, annotations we discard, right? So because uh, we would like to, to make it clear, right? So I'll, I'll uh, get um, a blank page here so that for the information of everybody, uh, one time um, review so that it could be clear. So here is the psychrometric table. Pardon me for my handwriting, uh, but uh, I'm getting used to it. I'm working on it. My, my digital pad, uh, I, I have this like uh, two months already. I'm, I'm getting used to writing in a, in a digital pad, not the ordinary pad. Yeah. So what are the parts of... Uh, this psychrometric uh, table uh, we will uh, use uh, this portion right so if if, if it is your like a center of uh, the process let me just uh, draw yeah so again as a review going to the right is what Sensible heating towards the left. It is sensible cooling. Going down, it is set. What is this? Uh, day. The humidifying going upward is what? Humidifying meaning uh, moisture content. Now, in between sensible cooling and humidifying, you have this process, right? Okay. So this is a combination of these two. So this is this. Now, in between humidifying and sensible heating, so you have another here, right? So what is this? Humidifying, let me make it uh, very fast. Humidifying and sensible heating. Now, uh, what else do we have here? A down, uh, uh, the downward side of what is this? How do you put this in a Cartesian plane? One, two, three, four. If you are studying uh, 
geometry or analytic geometry at, at quadrant three no third quadrant no you can project a uh, slope downward here it is a combination of sensible cooling and the humidifier and they, they, they are the the process involved in air conditioning no, in, in especially in psychrometry the study of water vapor in the air now uh, how many process that of uh, four yeah, four plus three, seven. I think uh, the other one, no, here, here. There is uh, another one, uh, I mean, here. I think uh, the, the, the adjabatic, yeah, here, yeah. So here, the, this process here, right here, is the so-called adjabatic, adjabatic. saturation where wet bulb is constant now temperature wet bulb is constant yeah so this is happening so here uh, adiabatic saturation when you heard adiabatic normally the enthalpy you know, enthalpy uh, if i'm not mistaken with the with the spelling is constant. For example, H1 equals H2 equals H3. So all the enthalpies lying on this line are the same no? because they are uh, in the process of adiabatic. Okay? Like the thermal expansion valve in the refrigeration. No? The enthalpy is constant at that um, expansion. No? Enthalpy 1, enthalpy 2, enthalpy 3, enthalpy 4, and, uh, I mean enthalpy Normally, enthalpy 1, 2, 3, 3, 3 and 4. Yeah? So, um, to be clear, let, let me draw the pH diagram, right? So, in refrigeration, which is the common, uh, the common um, chart used in the refrigeration is pH, pressure, enthalpy. So, we have here, right, in the evaporator, it goes there from 4 to 1, then it goes outside the the bell curve or the curve no so this one is super heat region no? at the discharge of the compressor it's a super heat but because it's very hot higher than saturation because uh, the compressor compressed the air it becomes hot when the uh, pressure is hot the temperature is also increased no? or uh, being amplified yeah then it goes to the condenser, uh, high side. Low side is uh, the evaporator. Then it will reach this line, and this line is saturated liquid. Now, meaning uh, it is a liquid, meaning F. For example, you can have here the HF, enthalpy of fluid, uh, SF, entropy of fluid, VF specific volume of the fluid so this line another half is gas no saturated line for v4 or gas so here uh, this line no is saturated v4 but what, what i'm what i'm after is that uh, that's why i i draw the diagram of the ph diagram is this no the, the point 1, 2, 3, and 4, this point 3 and 4, what can you observe? We have a constant enthalpy. Now look at this. The pressure is high, enthalpy is this. Pressure is going down, enthalpy is this. Pressure goes down, enthalpy is still here. The pressure is going down further, the enthalpy is this. Up to here, the enthalpy is this. So we have a constant enthalpy yeah constant enthalpy and this is happening in the adiabatic now so when you say adiabatic in um, refrigeration and air conditioning constant enthalpy so here adiabatic saturation is uh, enthalpy is constant or not changing okay so now let me let me go um uh, very quick 
to this part. So how do you read the the psychrometric table? So here, going to the rightward, you can you can have the the dry bulb uh, temperature no? temperature dry dry bulb. Now here, so it is it is for example, uh, it is uh, negative something, then zero, then ten, twenty. 50 or 40, uh, yeah, 40, 50, 60, 70 degrees centigrade, right? So going to the right is increasing. So that's why it's called the sensible heating, right? So here is lowering of temperature. It's, it is cooling, right? So now uh, you can have that uh, in uh, vertical, right? So it is... Uh, the, the motion is in horizontal, but you have to read no, that in a vertical manner, right? So now here is the saturation line, which is 100% relative humidity. Yeah? So 100% relative humidity. So here, the curve is the relative humidity. For example, here is uh, maybe 10, uh, 30. 40, 50 relative humidity. So it goes 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 percent yeah, relative humidity. Okay. So now um, the other is the, the wet bulb. Uh, the wet bulb temperature. Let me use another. Yeah. I think white is better. Yeah. Because we have a dark contrast. So what is uh, where is wet bulb? No, so here, wet bulb, right? The the wet bulb is here. Yeah? The, that line is wet bulb. Wet bulb temperature, okay? Wet bulb temperature, but it it is collinear or it, it the the two lines are coinciding. No, so somewhere here the wet bulb and another scale hill here is a. Uh, H or enthalpy. So here, enthalpy, 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 enthalpy. Now, so uh, what I'm saying is that um, enthalpy uh, has the same slope with wet bulb temperature. Yeah. So wet bulb, now wet bulb temperature, then enthalpy. Yeah. Same slope okay same slope now what else can we have from here let me use another color to differentiate <clears throat> with the others so blue blue dark blue what maybe dark red or black black <clears throat> another parameter is this right so here is kind of leaning like maybe 30 degrees yeah but here is more, uh, more, more no, stiff, stiff, yeah, more stiff, 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 not stiff, stiff is hard, yeah, steep, yeah, long E. So this line, we can have a line, we can have a line, line, line like that. So this line is what? Specific. Volume. Why, why specific volume? What's the unit of uh, volume? So volume is meter cube, then specific, specific to a uh, weight, no? meter cube per kilogram or cubic foot per pound. No? So this volume is specific for every pound weight, <clears throat> uh, 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 pound mass. No? So what else? What else do we, uh, can we, can we read from the from the psychrometric table. So another, you know, after having that, is the the so-called this one. Yeah. So if you you're trying to project the the horizontal, like that. Yeah. Horizontal, horizontal straight line. Horizontal straight line. Horizontal straight line. Horizontal straight line. So you can have from here the so-called SH, or the specific humidity, right? Or the so-called Omega or W, W1 or W2. So here, if this is your point one and this is your point two, 
omega 1 is equal to omega 2 now because it's just constant now whether well as as the temperature is increasing uh, nothing nothing is happening to specific humidity now it's, it's constant whether 20 this one uh, this this portion now uh, you have a value here 30 40 50 it's increasing but here it's just the same because constant process here for the specific humidity so somewhere here also <clears throat> somewhere here also if you get the specific humidity i think it has the same line with another property which is the so-called uh, uh dew point no dew point some are placed here yeah so specific humidity and dew point are here now so, some are here the, the dew point values it depends on the the psychrometric chart so let me erase all of that right so we go now to the, the to the problem so the, the problem is here right so here is the problem 21 uh, degrees centigrade the uh, dry bulb um, 16 degrees centigrade wet bulb because it is uh, lesser than the dry bulb then there, we have a mass of air then it goes to the heater why how do you know that it is a heater because there is a coil no coil is like a yeah swirling part of a metal coil yeah so because the effectivity of heat transfer is affected when you try to to increase the the length no so when you have a coil in the evaporator or condenser it it is uh, trying to to long to to make the length more yeah by by means of this uh, coiled uh, or swirled uh, uh, mode of uh, this uh, form form of uh, the, the metal now so here is the entrance that is point one here's the entrance point one then point two yeah when it pass when the air passes through the heater it, it will become hot hotter yeah it's it's heated to 75 degrees centigrade so here is the the heater then the, that heat will be uh, thrown to the or will be used to the in the adiabatic um, dryer so this is the adiabatic dryer because uh, in in the air drying our ideal uh, ideal scheme ideal ideal situation here is <clears throat> adiabatic dryer scheme schematic or the plan of adiabatic uh, dryer right so here the, the constant uh, the, the mass is still constant the mass a mass a no? because law of conservation of mass law of conservation of energy no so mass entering equals mass leaving whatever you you put it will come out <clears throat> So here is still a uh, mass of air is there, so it's a constant. Now, so at the discharge, no, at the output or discharge point of the dryer, we have this mass of air, this 40, 43 dry bulb and 70% relative humidity. Okay, so these are the 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 plotted the parameters now. In the dryer, as you can see, now if I may ask you, how many points or how many dry bulb are we talking about here? How many dry bulb temperatures are involved in this project? Uh, in this project, in this uh, problem. So we have a dry bulb one at one at this one. Twenty one. Now let me write that. So first we have 21 degrees centigrade. Then after that, it was heated to here. Look at this, 75. Okay. So it's very hot, 75 degrees, because it comes from the heater, right? But then when you when you put a material in the dryer, yeah. So you put a material. What kind of material? Normally the grain, right? Like palay. Or what is it? Maybe coconut husk, or or milk, or abaca, or sand. You no, know, whatever you want to dry, you put the 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 uh, material in the dryer. So the, the the heat energy from coming from the heater 
will go to the feed no? because you are trying to feed here. So the heat will transfer to the feed, right? That's why here we have the, the, the feed, yeah? So when you, when you put the feed and then heat transfer will occur and then you will have the product. So uh, what I'm trying to say in this dryer, we have uh, two major sections. Yeah, so this is this is part is the feed, and this part is the product. Yeah, so what happens when our temperature from the heater is seventy five? After after the dryer, it becomes what forty three. Okay, so again twenty one heating. Yeah, it, heating means heater sensible heating so the equipment is in the heater and then when you when you put uh, the material in the dryer so this one is 0.1 to here one to two the process is heating then here it goes back to here now so here the temperature is what 43 no 43 now it, 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 it will not come back like this no it is not it should not be collinear in this. No, it, it should not go inside because um, there is this. Uh, uh, the, the process is here. Now the, the involved is this. No? So let me review. Here is cooling, and upward is what. Cooling upward is what. You may define. Okay, so what's happening in that is um, there's a cooling process, meaning lowering of temperature, and then uh, there is this process. No, if, if I if I may write this, there is this process of um, humidifying. No, humidifying. Okay, so let me use this. What is happening in the in that uh, uh, problem of uh, dryer is this right so from point one heated to point two 75 degrees centigrade is 21 what is the equipment involved in this you are right what is this heater is the equipment what is the process heating sensible heating okay so from point one let me emphasize point one to point two now when you try to put some material in the dryer put the material you feed na? you feed a material like uh, in this case um, palai or green you try to put uh, the material into the dryer so that the heat coming from the heater will transfer to the pali, yeah. So obviously, the temperature will lower, will be lower than 75. So here at this point in the problem, there's a 43 uh, degrees centigrade and I think, um, what is the relative humidity? 70 yes a 70 relative humidity okay so at the discharge at the output of the dryer 70 percent relative humidity and 43 so from 75 it becomes 43 now so there's no other way to plot that except here now. So you are lowering the temperature because the, 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 the heat from the heater transferred to the to the pali, no? And then it is being what is that? It is being uh what is the process? Humidified, no? So going upward. Going upward is humidifying. Okay, so when humidifying,
Okay, yeah. So going upward is uh, you may you may be fine. So this is point uh, three. Yeah. So our process is like this. Yeah. So this one and this one. Okay. So this is point three. Yeah. Because we have uh, uh, humidifying, humidifying, and uh, and this uh, cooling. Yeah. This one. It goes back. It goes back here. So it becomes how many? Four, three, three degrees centigrade, and the relative humidity now is seventy percent. Our age. This one is lower, yeah? like lower, huh? higher, higher, higher. Here, the here is seventy percent uh, relative humidity. Yeah, relative humidity here. So this one is seventy percent relative humidity. Then you can have this forty-three uh, dry bulb temperature. So you can get what? You can get something. You can get the specific humidity at the three. You can the you can get the um. Oh, dew point temperature at three. You can get the enthalpy at enthalpy at three. Then you can get the also the specific volume at three. Now th those are the things that you can uh, find in the psychrometric chart. Now because all I have to do is to enclose this, right? Close. This yeah, right, so the it will resemble our psychrometric chart, right? Okay. So now, uh, since we explained this uh, very uh, very clear, I think in a non-engineering manner, everybody can understand. Uh, we go now to this, right? So here, uh, it's a. A very neat, very clear presentation of uh, the parameters. Look at this: 21 degrees centigrade dry bulb, 16 degrees centigrade wet bulb. That's the point one. And what can we get from point one? We can get the W1 or the specific humidity at one. No, 0 0.0094. What is this? So if you are in metric, you have this kilogram of water or moisture per kilogram of DA. What is the Dry air. So kilogram and kilogram will be cancelled out so it's uh, will it will become a unit less. There's no unit. 0 0.0094. Now, W1 expectedly is equal to W2. Why? Because if you go back to our psychrometric a chart now this is one and this is two now obviously they have seen specific humidity one equals specific humidity two or omega or w1 or is equal is equal to w2 okay they have the same specific humidity that's why w1 0.0094 specific humidity 2 or W2 is 0 0.0094 now where, uh, what can uh, what else can we get uh, the H1 how do we get the H1 this one no so here we can have H1 right meaning kilojoule per kilogram we can also have the specific volume somewhere here maybe meter cube volume yeah, meter cube per kilogram specific uh, kilogram of uh, of that uh, mass yeah one kilogram specific to one kilogram mass. so i think it's very clear now uh, and then uh, we were able to get the the enthalpy one right the enthalpy one specific humidity one and uh, also equal to specific humidity two we can get the specific volume which is 0.846 meter cube per kilogram Okay, so meaning at point one, at point one, we get the specific humidity one, which is also equal to specific humidity two. We can get the specific volume, yeah, property, 0.846 meter cube of volume per unit uh, mass kilogram. 
we can get the enthalpy, which is uh, specific to uh, unit mass also, kilojoule, the energy yeah, per kilogram, because kilojoule is kilonewton meter, no, kilojoule, specific for every kilogram. Okay, now we go to point uh, two, where is point two? Point two is here, here. So point two is here. What are the parameters involved in point two? 75 degrees centigrade, right? So here, 75 degrees centigrade, what can you say? So specific humidity P, uh, two is the same as specific humidity one and there's a here vertical, we were able to get this, what is this? 75 degrees centigrade, tribal. So if you have a point that is specific humidity and uh, this, nah, you can have this, right? The H, H2, what else? V2, specific volume, yeah? specific volume, V2, and H2, okay? And uh, you can also maybe get yeah, here, same specific humidity too, and uh, uh, dew point, temperature at two. Yeah? Or whatever parameters you can get from from uh, this point, right? Then I think we're done with the uh, number two. No? So let me. Let me make it very clear. At point two, which we have 75 degrees, we were able to get the specific humidity two, which is also spe same as specific humidity one, then volume two, 1.001 meter cube per kilogram. We were able to get the enthalpy too. Now, last point. Our last point class is this, no? So our last point is point three. And where is this point three supposed to be? Supposed to be here, yeah? So point three, maybe we could have dry bulb three, relative humidity three. No, this is dry bulb 43. It's a bit lesser than 75. 70% was given as a relative humidity at the at the discharge. Hmm. Now another another uh, parameters that were given is this feed. Yeah. So feed. Uh, there's a section here. Copper. Where do you where do you put the feed? No. So there's a copper. You know, maybe like that. Parang imbudo, no. So it's like a funnel, it's like an embudo in our language, or the shoot, no? the other term is shoot, or silo if it's big. I mean, where, where you fit, where you put the grains, where you put the materials, the copper. So feed, no? so this is feed or feeding. So when you feed here, then there's a process of heat transfer here, yeah? then it goes out as a product, you know, so feed, product, and uh, what can you say about the moisture content? Obviously, 24% moisture content at the feed will be less, yeah? so it becomes 8%, moisture content, uh, percent moisture content of the product. Here is the percent moisture content of the feed. So from 24, it becomes Eight, meaning the water was extracted, the water vapor was dried because it's a dryer. Now, if in the product your moisture content is increased or it becomes large, you are not using a dryer, maybe you are using a sprinkler or moisturizer. Yeah, when the moisture or water vapor content is increased. It is not a dryer, okay? So obviously, the moisture content at the product should be less. The moisture content at the product is less than the moisture content at the feed, okay? So I think it's very clear. Now we go to the mathematics, and uh, it's just uh, mathematical manipulation. Uh, here are the given, uh, just to re-emphasize. 
24% of the feed when it goes to the product point becomes 8% only the moisture content. Then there was also a, a data that was uh, able to capture here the specific humidity at 3 is 0 0.0396. What is that? Here, yeah. At point 0.3, this is the point 0.3. 3.3. So there's a specific humidity here, yeah? W3 or specific humidity 3, depending on how you represent it in your calculations. Then you can get here the V3. You can also get here the H3 enthalpy at 3. Okay? So if you already get all those parameters, if you get all those parameters, then we are good to go. We are good to go. So, so how do we solve this kind of problem? First, the amount of moisture extracted, meaning what is the amount of water being evaporated? What is the amount of um, water vapor that is able to, to be extracted or, or evaporated? Yeah. So the formula is this, no? so mass extracted. No, mass flow is equal to mass of dry air then SH3 minus SH2 or mass evaporated is mass of air, air meaning flow rate is specific humidity 3 minus specific humidity 2. Y3 and Y2. So here is point 0.1. Here is point 0.2. Here is point 0.3. What happens in 1 to 2, you should always um, remember what is the process involved in every point. 1, 2, this is heating. That's why there is a heater. Right? Heater. Let me go back to our adiabatic schematic. Yeah. Heater. One. Oh my God. One to two. Heater. Right? Let me go back to my drawing. Heater. One to two. Then two to three. Two to three is drying. That's why there's a dryer. So the equipment is the dryer. And the process is what drying let me go back to our schematic uh, block diagram two to three two to three here yeah from two to three two to three the process happens in the equipment called dryer and and the process is drying so let me go back to our psychrometric uh, representation in the tape, in the chart. So two to three, two to three, drying, then dryer. See, so that's why it's, it should happen. The dryer drying should happen in two and three, yeah, two and three. But the Specific humidity of 3 is greater than specific humidity of 2. That's why we will have a positive um, value. Positive value, yeah, of specific humidity. Then we will multiply to the mass flow rate of air. Now, so let us check the, the units. So, mass of air, then uh, what is this? W3 minus W2. So minus, uh, what is what is this? Maybe a uh, kilogram per minute or kilogram per second. Now this is kilogram per kilogram. Uh, kilogram per kilogram. So it's just the same. Uh, kilogram per kilogram canceled. So it will become kilogram per minute or kilogram per hour or kilogram per second. Now, I mean a mass when it's time. Uh, when, it, when you get the rate of mass, it becomes flow rate. Mass flow rate, mass flow rate. Now the other notation is that. And the others are just like this. 
that MMO. So, uh, the substituting values, mass of dry air is specific humidity 3, which is 0 0.0396, larger than specific humidity 2, humidity 2, which is equal to specific humidity 1, so 0 0.009. So, we can get a, a difference here. Now, but the, the problem is we don't have mass of dry air. That's the problem. So, how do we get the mass of dry air? This one. So, mass by elementary definition is what? Density is mass over volume. Yeah? And then, well, is it related here? So, density is mass over volume. If you get the mass, it is density times volume. But I think uh, what we're talking about here is uh, is another. It's uh, It has to do with the area. So, this maybe is not the appropriate uh, um, formula. The formula is the formula for the fluid, fluid uh, mechanics, which is Q equals A. What is Q? What is A? Area. What is B? Velocity. Yeah, this is the formula. Yeah, Q equals A V. Volume. No, that, this is not. This is not the heat. Yeah, so don't be confused with the notations in fluid mechanics. Should not be mixed up with the notation in. Uh, thermodynamics or heat transfer no? Q in heat transfer is heat, kilowatt or BTU per hour, kilo per second Q in fluid mechanics is volume flow rate, meter cube per second meter cube per hour cubic foot per second, cubic foot per hour let us check the units no? what is the unit for area, square meter, what is the unit for velocity meter per second, so here, 2 and 1 meter cube. No? You just add the exponent, then second meter cube per second, meaning volume flow rate. No? The rate of volume that pass in a given time. Yeah? For example, for every second, how many meter cube? Okay? So that is what we're going to, to, to find. And I think uh, if you are an engineering student, you, you could... Uh, you could uh, see here now so because you were given here yeah so what is this what is this you are right this is what meter minute velocity what is the other what is this duck dimension what kind of duck circular yeah so you have a circular duck the cross section ducting is like a pipe, no? Ducting. So if you study air conditioning, duct sizing, yeah, duct sizing. Yeah. So this is the duct. The cross section is this. Yeah. So if you want to get the cross section, you are trying to get the area. And what is the area of a circular section? circle <clears throat> the area of a circle is what pi b square over 4 so we have a pi what is diameter 183 centimeter over 4 then you should square so now you have the area of the circle or c okay so if you have the area and you have the velocity then you will have the volume Low rate. Okay, so let us go back there in the calculation. Okay, so let me clear this out so that it's not messy in our eyesight. Yeah? We are trying to find the mass of dry air, yeah, mass of dry air, and the how is the volume flow rate related to that? Yeah, so here is this, right? So mass is this, yeah? 
mass is of the dry air, or let us say M sub A, is V over V. What is this? V over V. V over V. What is this V? This V here is the uh, specific volume. We can get this specific volume in the psychometric chart, right? What about this? Yeah, what is this volume here? Because our target is this, yeah, kilogram per minute, or kilogram per hour, or kilogram per second. Huh? So how could we have this? So here volume, what is this volume that we are uh, trying to have? Yeah. So in order to have a kilogram per second, this kilogram should go up and then should have a time element here. Yeah. So second. Okay. So let, let us uh, analyze this. So here, what is this here? So this portion here is the area, okay? Pi over four, uh, oh. okay, this one is the area. I think, uh, yeah. So this one is area. Let me erase this to avoid confusion. So this is the area, pi over 4, d square, pi over 4, d square, this is the area. This one is the velocity, right? Meter per minute, meter per minute. This is the, the, the speed of the air passing through the duct. Yeah, so VA, if you have the VA, you will have the volume flow rate, yeah? QAV, yeah, QAV equals Q or V, yeah? V. So, let me, let me, let me detail out the, this thing here, right? So, we have the area. What is this? Area. Pi over 4 d squared. So, 183 cm. Okay? But here is the meter, right? Uh, the, the, the unit is in meter for the speed. So, I think it is uh, convenient for us to 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 convert this into meter so 183 centimeter like uh, 100 uh, centimeter in one meter so centimeter centimeter will be cancelled out double uh, to zero then this is 1.83 meter right so 1.83 meter okay but you have to square right pi this is d no this D, so you have to square, yeah, I will square this and this, right, because it's area, area is in the second degree exponent, yeah, so pi over 4 D square, so that you can have a meter square, so let me have that, right, right in front of you, I will pull out the calculator, scientific, Pi, where is pi? Okay, pi over 4 over 1.83 uh, meter square. So, one, pi, where is pi? Here, pi, uh, 3.14, blah, 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 blah. Divided by 4, yeah, equals 0.87. 
3.854, no? 3.9 is 4. Divide, uh, what's that? Pi over 4 times quantity 1.83 end of the quantity here, right? Square. Look at this. X squared. The X the variable and the degree of exponent is 2 X squared, right? So what is this? 2.63. Are, are we correct? So again, uh, let me clear this out. We start with the 1.83. So 1.83 times 1.83. Now it's just squaring. Yeah? So we have 3.3489. So let me put equals pi over 4 times 3 point, uh, what is that? Where's that? Three point three four eight nine. Three point three four eight nine. Three point thirty four eighty nine. So when you multiply that, all are in meters. Not all are in meters because uh, pi over four d square because this will become meter. It is an area, right? So let me have that. Three point thirty four eighty nine times pi over four. Again, again, again. 3.3489. Right? It's already squared, right? Because here, 1.83 times 1.83, yeah, it's a square unit. No? So this becomes already a squared units times pi times pi divided by 4. So 2.63, yeah? So here is 2.63. No? I'll just use two decimal places to simplify. 2.63 square meter, right? So 2.63 square meter. And then we multiply that with uh, 366. Yeah? So this one, 366. So let me write that, yeah? So in order to get the mass of air, you have to multiply this uh, 366 meter per minute multiplied by 2.63 square meter. Essentially, this is the area. Yeah, this is the velocity. So you will have a volume flow rate. No, flow rate. Volume flow rate yeah so what happens yeah it, yeah it is meter cube yeah it's a volume flow rate meter cube per minute okay so meter cube per minute right so here if you check the unit you have a meter cube per minute here then there's a general bar a bar a bar of the denominator and then at the uh, at the bottom side, there is this uh, specific volume, meter cube per kilogram. So meter cube and meter cube are both at the numerator. So what happens is 1 over minute, 1 over kilogram. So I have to multiply this by kilogram and um, also the numerator here and the numerator here is the kilogram. So kilogram and kilogram will be cancelled. So all this become one. This one is kilogram per minute. Okay. So uh, that, that is our uh, solution. No? So we divide this by 0.846. No? So what, what is our... Uh, we multiply yeah, here 366 by 2.63. So let me write that. So masses of air now is 366 times 2.63 divided by um, 0.846 and then it will become like a kilogram per 
minute. Now, so we should uh, arrive at that uh, solution. 366 to 0 0.3, 0 0.846. So let me have that. Let me write it down on the paper you know, because the, our digital type uh, may, may reset and uh, it will lose everything. So here, what do we have? Oh, 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 what do we have? Here is a 366 six times 2.63 divided by 0 0.846. So we will put that, or we'll input that in the calculator that we have here. So here, what is this? Is this our our volume flow rate? All we have to do, if this is the volume flow rate, we have to divide this uh, with a point eight four six. If we are right, yeah. So three point ten is that right? Uh, let me check. So we, we again have this uh, in our calculator. Where's that? Here. So in our calculator, so we have uh, 366, which is the, uh, the velocity, then times the, the area. Our area 2.63 was divided by the what is this area a specific volume yeah meter cube per, per kilogram then it will become kilogram per minute yeah? divided by 0.846.846 wow 1137.8 look at this 1137.8 or this one is 0.9 right look at this 1137.8 so this one is 1107.9 because uh, i think uh, we have a, some differences with this uh, specific humidity yeah so if you can see 0 0.0396 point zero zero nine. now the but the others we can uh, uh, maybe I only use 0 0.039. No, there's no this uh, six here 0 0.006. So there's a difference in terms of uh, the uh, of uh, the, the the value that we are using in the specific humidity. Now some are using four decimal places, some are using three, some are rounding up, and so on. So but but uh, if only 0 0.001, no, no, so it's less than four or five percent. There's no problem. You know? So. If your answer is 1137.9 or 1137.8, now you are good. Okay, so let me erase this. So the answer for the mass of dry air is this, right? We are not yet the uh, done. Mass of extracted is mass of dry air. Then we have to, to, to multiply with the specific humidity at 3. Minus specific humidity or mass of dry air is SH. Now you can have also if you are having a hard time or difficulty in uh, writing this notation, specific humidity three minus specific humidity two. So substituting values, we have one thousand one hundred thirty-seven point nine or point eight kilogram per minute, and then this one you, you just have to get the difference. 0 0.0396 minus uh, 0 0.009 then you will have uh, because this is kilogram per kilogram you can all you will have kilogram per minute no so this one is this uh the 34.81 kilogram per minute and how do you do you convert this into minute yeah there is what one minute 60 seconds yeah, so minute and minute will be cancelled all we'll be left all we'll be left is kilogram per second so if you compute that this is the uh, mass flow rate of dry air so mass flow rate of dry air is what in seconds 0.58 to 
0 0.2 kilogram per second. If you get 0 0.56, it's okay now because here the others are using maybe 0 0.039 only or 0 0.03. When you round it off, 0 0.0 maybe 0 0.4. Now you can round off this. Some are using more than this now, so it, it doesn't uh, matter. No? So per per uh, rule of thumb. It should not be greater than four to five percent. I mean the, the tolerance. Now, if it's greater than four to five percent, use the the larger uh, value. No? So if it's not exceeding five percent, uh, we are good to go. Or it's just a calculation. So if it's near this uh, value, 0 0.58, 0 0.56, and so on, the 0.5, right? We are good to go. Okay. So that is the, the mass extracted, 0.58, 0 to kilogram of water evaporated yeah, from that uh, material. What is the material? What is the material? It doesn't say anything about the material, but uh, uh, that there's a material that is being extracted. Okay, so here, let me erase this and uh, we will immediately go to the second uh, uh, question so the second question is capacity of the dryer uh, capacity of the dryer so let me have that yeah so here is the solution for the capacity of the dryer so okay so uh, let us continue so we have to continue the um, problem solving and we are in the second uh, question and the second question is uh, about the capacity of the dryer per ton of wet feed yeah so here is the question um, here what is the capacity of the dryer here what is the capacity of the dryer. Okay, so now the capacity of the dryer, we have to have some kind of insight in this uh, question. Yeah? So as uh, we recall from our lecture here, like a few days ago, it says here, <coughs> uh, okay, uh, it says here capacity of the dryer. This one. The the capacity the dryer capacity here. The, the dryer capacity is always referred to the product unless otherwise specified. So it is referred to the, the product when you talk about the capacity of the dryer it refers to the, the product and normally it is uh, with the, some specific uh, um, weight now, like uh, in this case it's a ton uh, long ton of uh, wet wet feed here so if there's no given, we should uh, use the capacity in terms of uh, product, product, yeah, product here. And we assume a one ton of feed, meaning uh, that the input, the input is the feed, right? So meaning uh, for every 1,000 kilogram, because ton, ton, ton is a French word. Is one thousand kilogram. <clears throat> when you when you go to the US, they call this this as long ton, right? Long ton. Because short, so, so long ton is one thousand kilogram. Short ton is what is this? Two thousand pounds. No. So when you convert this, uh, two thousand pounds. To kilogram, it's just 900 plus. Okay, so 2,000 pounds. Yeah, this is the short ton. 
So for every kilogram one kilogram is 2.204 pounds, right? So when you when you get the short ton short the ton or ton only it is less than 1000 kilogram uh, so i'll show you yeah so that we will be clear with this now so when you divide when you when you divide 2000 pounds divided by two point oh my god what is this oh. Again, 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 2,000 divided by 2.204, only, right? So here, ton, is 907, no? it's, a, it's a big difference. Again, uh, 2,000 pounds divided by uh, 2.204 2, pounds divided by 2.204 equals, I like that, what's happening? 2,000 divided by 2.204. Two zero four nine hundred seven point four only. Yeah, so one ton is nine hundred seven point four kilogram, but one ton is long ton one thousand kilogram. Yeah? So there's a difference. Yeah, they are not equal. Yeah. So now uh, here we. We assume a long ton or metric ton, right? So here the ton, the ton, ton. Here is the long ton or metric ton, which is one thousand kilogram. Yeah. So now uh, we are going to assume that our feed is. Uh, 1,000 um, kilogram. So here is the equation. Bone dry mass is constant and uh, the mass of the feed, no? bone dry mass of the feed equals the bone dry mass of the product. So when you interchange A equals B, B equals A. So it is like this. So all you have to do is to substitute values. No? So P, 1 minus percent MP. So this is the flow rate mass flow rate of the product, you have to multiply 1 minus the percent moisture of the product, which is 8%. And when you uh, use that in the in mathematical form, it should be converted into decimal, right? So 1 minus 0 0.08. Then feed minus 1 minus percent of the feed. So this, is, uh, this here is uh, uh, explains the, the, uh, the, the so-called the dryness, right? So if you have 100% the dryness minus say 24% of moisture, moisture means water, water content, and then you will you will get of course uh, some amount which is uh, 76, yeah, 76%. If you use the uh, in the uh, in the calculation, you have to um, divide 100 to get the decimal, it becomes 0.76, right? So that is the dry mess, the bone dry. It is 24% moisture, meaning there is a 24% water vapor. Of course, there is a 76% dry part. Da? So that is it. So you have to multiply that with the mass flow at the feed. This one, 92%, because product is more dry, already 92%. Uh, because coming from 8% moisture, yeah? 
So, 92% dry. So, 92% dry. 76% dry. Okay? Or here, 24% wet. It becomes 8% wet only. Okay? So, coming from this, you can develop an uh, equation where in P equals uh, F times 0 0.76 divided by, divided by 0 0.92. So, here, if you divide these two numbers, you will get 0.83. So assuming, no, assuming hypothetically, that your 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 dryer is kind of perfect, you know, dryer. Uh, um, assume, but you have a perfect dryer, meaning uh, hundred percent efficiency. Meaning, uh, you have a um, one thousand. Kilogram feed, uh, I mean, gram, a product, then 1000 kilogram of feed. So this is the wet feed. This is the dry product. So, assuming that you have a 1000 kilogram dry product from 1000 kilogram wet feed, now this will be cancelled out. And then uh, your answer is this. You have 0 0.83. So 0.83 is your your uh, capacity. I, I, your your what's that? Capacity of the dryer. So what what if we have uh, like this? So what if we change the some assumption? What if your drive is only 800 kilogram? per 1,000 feet kilogram. No? So here, times 0.83, now you will get this, right? So 0, 0, 8 over 10 is what? Half of this is 4, half of this is 5. No? So 0 0.83 times uh, 4, what is 4 over 5 is what? 4 over 5. So, 0.8383 times 4 divided by 5, 0.6. So, your capacity is 0.664, yeah, 0.664, right, of 800 kilograms per 1,000 kilograms. So the model, it's like a modeling equation. Yeah? So whatever is your input here, ton of dry products yeah, per ton of feed, meaning ton, uh, long ton, metric ton, 1,000 kilogram. Meaning for every 1,000 kilogram, you will have 0.83 of whatever is the feed. Uh, that is the meaning of the capacity because capacity it's always referred to the product side, no? unless otherwise specified. No? That is the model, the equation for the capacity of the dryer. Now we go to the last question you know, because uh, it takes long time to solve this. Yeah, so heat supply to air. What is this? Heat supply to the dryer. Now see, heat supply to the the dryer. I, uh, that's the, the the third question. Is heat supply to the to the dryer? So heat supply. Let me kind of correct this. Heat supply to the dryer. Meaning, uh, what is the amount of heat coming from the the heater? Right. Again. So here is the heater. You have the coil, then after the heater, there is the dryer. So in the dryer, there 
is this material, bulk of materials we call feed and then it goes out, it becomes feed product. So there's a moisture percent of the feed, there's a moisture percent of the product which is less. Yeah? So here is less moisture, more dry. Less moisture, more dry. This is more wet, yeah? less dry. Now, how do we solve this mass? Uh, the, the, the heat supply to the dryer is this. Yeah? The general equation is mass of dry air times the energy content. Yeah, so H2 minus H1. Now, why? Why? Why H2 and H1? Why? So going back to the psychrometric chart, here is your point 1. Here is your point 2. From point 1 to point 2, there's a process happening and that is sensible heating. So sensible heating, you are increasing the, tempera the, the, the temperature yeah, from point 1 up to point 2 because you are in that equipment called heater, yeah, right? So if you have a mass of air, mass flow, then you have a higher enthalpy here or higher energy, H2 minus H1. We check the unit. The unit of enthalpy, when you try to get a difference, uh, it's only pyridol per kilogram. This one is what? Kilogram per minute. So, kilogram and kilogram will be cancelled out. And what will happen is this, right? Uh, Q is kilojoule per minute, right? So, how do we make sense of this? Of course, it's a unit of power. Yeah? So, because uh, joule is work or energy, when it's divided by time or time element, it becomes power. So, we're talking about kilowatt. So, how do you convert? How do you convert kilojoule per minute into kilowatt? So, here, one minute is 60 seconds. So, minute and minute, what will be left is kilojoule per uh, second, no, over 60. Okay, so it's like this. So kilogram, kilojoule per kilogram, kilogram and kilogram will be cancelled. What will be left is kilojoule per minute. Then one minute is 60 seconds. So when you divide this with 60 seconds, you will get this. 1,046.9 kilowatts. No? So Q is 1,046.9. Well, when you round it off, like going upward, 1,047 kilowatts. Yeah? So the answer here, what is the amount of heat supplied to the dryer from the heater it is supplied to the dryer is this right so it's, it's equivalent to 1047 yeah because it's 1046.9 yeah? 1047 kilowatts so i think that is the solution for the three problem uh, uh questions that is given in problem number one that we have considered. So I think that's all for now. We will cut it and then we will continue with the next problem, board exam problem.